Hi, I'm Wally Conway from Home Pro Inspections in Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you for joining me for the program, Chinese Drywall. Everything you ever wanted to know and uh, were afraid to ask. One of the things you may be asking is, by gosh, Wally, what uh, really puts you in a position to be sharing this program with me about Chinese drywall? Well, I I'll give you the backstory. About a decade ago, when the Chinese drywall issue first surfaced in America, Senator Bill Nelson uh, here in Florida put together a task force. It was a regional task force, all the states in the Southeast. They gathered together in uh, Tampa, Florida. And it was a group of product manufacturers, that is the presentation was two days long, product manufacturers, scientists, public health officials. It was all the, the brightest minds that he could gather together who knew anything or anything at all about the issue of Chinese drywall. So the intention was to bring all the thoughts together, discuss what was known so that then they can figure out what to do in a, in a policy sense and uh, that we in the real estate profession would know what to do. The attendees at this group in Tampa 10 years ago was very, very interesting. There were 300 attendees. More than half of the attendees were actually attorneys. They were product liability attorneys who thought, my gracious, there's something bad going on. There must be a way to capitalize. So the vast majority of the audience was, in fact, product liability attorneys. The, the next segment of the audience, which accounted for about half, were public health officials, manufacturers, uh, contractors, people who were very concerned about the impact of the Chinese drywall as opposed to uh, the lawyer. So it was good everybody was in the right room. People trying to make it better and the people trying to make a buck. And there were actually two home inspectors in the room uh, and, and I was one of them. And the outgrowth of that was getting a really good background about what caused the problem, how to identify the problem, what to do about the problem, the risks in a health sense, the risks in a, in a real estate transaction sense, and, and from that, I wrote a program. And uh, this program I'm about to do for you is a distilled down version of that program. It was a three hour continuing education program. It was written with real estate agents in mind so that they could understand, identify, relate to, and explain things to the consumer so that they were comfortable and not harmed. Well, I submitted that program to the Florida Real Estate Commission for approval. And uh, it ended up being denied. And it's a very interesting process. If you've never been uh, before the Florida Real Estate Commission, I've actually been before the commission twice. I've also been before the Construction Industry Licensing Board. When you have creative thoughts and you share them, you often get invited to uh, share the, why did you have that creative thought, Mr. Conway? So anyway, I appear before the Florida Real Estate Commission to explain to them why uh, they should approve the three-hour continuing education program for real estate agents on Chinese drywall. So I made my case and explained why. On a split decision, this course was never approved for continuing education in its three-hour format or what we're doing today, certainly in well under an hour. When I ask why, which you're allowed to do, the, uh, and I only lost by one vote, it was a split decision. Uh, but anyway, I, it was explained to me that the, the topic matter, the subject was sufficiently complex that real estate agents likely wouldn't understand it. I thought that was fascinating coming from the Florida Real Estate Commission. So I went on a, a bit of a mission to share the information that we had with uh, anyone and everyone that was listening. So over these last 10 years, this program has been uh, presented in a one hour format, and we'll, we'll be a little bit less than that today, but in a, in a one hour lunch and learn format, several hundred times to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of real estate agents. We've also done it on video and for home inspectors. So that's the backstory and, and the why. So uh, without further ado, let me uh, screen share with you and we'll move right through this. Also, I will be uh, providing you um, the notes. I, I will send you copies of the slides I'll, uh, and the handouts that we originally wrote for the Florida Real Estate Commission so that you in fact will be one of the wisest people in all of America as it relates to Chinese drywall. While it's honest to say it doesn't percolate to the surface as much as it once did, when it does, it is even more difficult to uh, work through the transaction, but you will be expert and able to do that. There we go. So everything that I tell you absolutely positively without exception of failure will be true and it will also be correct. And when I say it will be correct, what I mean is it came from one of the sources in front of you, a definitive source from the Center of Disease Control, from the Consumer Product Safety Commission, 
from the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Affairs, from the Florida Department of Health, or the Florida Attorney General. As it turns out, all of these people were represented at that initial conference. All of these people, not only at that time, but since that time, have been involved in resolution for these various uh, practical issues, legal issues, and real estate issues. So what do we actually call this stuff? This has been a, a bugaboo. So any of these terms typically mean the same thing. Chinese drywall, I think that's very descriptive. It came from China. There are people who advocate calling a virus a Chinese virus. The challenge with that is there were others before and there'll be more again. Toxic drywall, there was a great thought for one period of time that it caused tremendous health issues. We were involved in an investigative sense with a, a, a very major Morgan & Morgan a product liability attorney where they would uh, they were doing ads customers would uh, reach out to them and say yeah i think i might have this i think i might be harmed and we would go out and do uh, an initial screening of the property to determine did it have chinese drywall some of these stories were absolutely tragic uh, one in particular sticks still in my mind a, a, an elderly couple which is interesting i'll, I'll be 65 here shortly so they were older than me. An elderly couple had bought their dream home. It was outside of Ocala. When we were doing these investigations, we were doing them all across North Florida. Elderly couple bought their dream home. They moved into their dream home. They had it built. Uh, they moved in, and shortly after they moved in, and both they were healthy, they believed at the time, and living good lives. One uh, of the husband uh, contracted, he was a non-smoker, contracted lung cancer and died. And shortly after, the grieving widow discovered she had breast cancer. She believed in her heart of hearts that it was caused by Chinese drywall. The home was built in the right period of time. They were living there, never had a problem before. We went and we did the investigation. There was no reason to suspect Chinese drywall. I share that to say when people have a fear, that fear is very, very real. And if that fear circum uh, shows itself in a real estate transaction, it's up to the real estate professional to dispel that fear. And we don't dispel people's fears by minimizing their concerns, but rather through an educative process. And the thought that the drywall is toxic was uh, very common in people's mind. Also called defective drywall, also called tainted drywall, also called suspect drywall. These various terms have surfaced from different professionals, sometimes to avoid using one term. So they didn't want to say Chinese, so they said toxic. They didn't want to say it was toxic, so they said it was defective. They didn't like that. So they, they, they came up with all these mealy mouth terms. In my world, it, it, the drywall in question originated in China. It was manufactured in China. It, it's very simple to call it Chinese drywall. No sense mealy mouth around, just call it Chinese drywall. Problematic drywall was another one that often came up. And my favorite was skunk board. And skunk board was the most honest of terms early on uh, in new construction. The guys hanging the drywall, they'd get a load of this Chinese drywall before we even used that term. And they'd say, oh man, this stuff stinks. We got another load of skunk board. So the construction guys, the subcontractors calling, uh, who were hanging the drywall, really identified it before anybody else. It would show up and it stunk like a skunk. And they called it skunk board. So why did this happen? Why in the world did this thing go sideways and how did it become such a great issue? It happened because in the, in the great uh, real estate boom, 03, 05, 06, we just ran out of drywall. The, the, we were manufacturing in the US, US Gyps and other fine companies manufacturing as fast as they could. The demand exceeded the ability to deliver. The Chinese, as they often do in virtually every area of production and business said, no problem. Let us make you some. When was this an issue? When it primarily happened, 03 to 07. That's the time of import. It was shortly after that that they identified the problem, turned that off. So this is when it came into the country. Now, it's still here. It didn't go anywhere. And I, I'll show you some uh, things. Many of you may have seen the video in the warehouse with the Chinese drywall. We don't know where it really ended up. Why? So drywall is gypsum which is the technical name or chemical name of gypsum is calcium sulfate now this can be mined you can mine it what they discovered is it's also easy to harvest out of big uh, stacks in power plants and similar things like that so as 
the, uh, the combustion products go up the flue. They have various scrubbers. They're big electric devices that attempt to pull the particles out of the flue gas, out of the smoke, before it billows into the community. So it's cleaning the air. It's scrubbing it. Then when this mesh of, a, of a electrical wires, you might say, this grid, when it gets full of the calcium sulfate, it needs to be cleaned off. So there's a cleaning process that deposits perfectly usable calcium sulfate. It is the waste product of cleaning a flue. And they discovered, my gracious, this is cheaper than mining. It's, a, it's very, very environmentally friendly, right? We sucked it out of the air, out of the flue gas. Now, rather than dispose of it, we're going to make drywall out of it. This is done all over the country, all over the world. There is a plant in Palaka, Florida, just south of Jacksonville, that has been doing this for decades successfully. It works very, very well. The question becomes, what went wrong in China? Well, this flue gas uh, process is a good thing. It prevents the acid rain. It, it makes it into a nice slurry. It's really good stuff. It removes the fly ash electrostatically. It's made in a drywall. Everything is about this good. It's cheaper, it's better, it's greener. But here's the problem. Here is the problem. What that calcium sulfate, how pure it is, and what those impurities are, depends upon what were we burning in that, in that power plant, as an example. What type of coal? What was else that was being burned? What was the water quality like that we were using to flirt, make that slurry? So what happened is it, it, it ended up smelling terrible. The Chinese were doing essentially the same process with different ingredients, meaning different coals, different other uh, combustibles, different water, and it just came out bad. It smelled like sulfur. People were immensely fearful about the health concerns. We'll review some of that. And symptomatically, it was corrosive. So this drywall somehow was leaching or effervescing or breathing, breathing into the air, and it was discoloring metals, jewelry, uh, heat pumps, and the, the thought was it was discoloring, it's corroding, it is also deteriorating these products. So what does this stuff look like? That's a big old stack of it, that's a little pixelated, apologize for that. But up close, that is a piece of Chinese drywall. Now this company, Nauf, world, world, worldwide manufacturing company, they make all kinds of products. It's a German company, they have plants making drywall all over the world. It's really sad for this company, but that that was made in China ended up having this tremendous problem. So if you see the brand name now, and I'll show you some other indicators, you go, ah, that has a good chance of being Chinese drywall. How else can you tell? There's a close up of the label. How about this? Made in China. Well, there's a dead giveaway, right? It says right on the board, it's made in China. And it, depending on where in China, which manufacturer, which plant, this is the dot, dot matrix print, it's a little harder to see, made in China. Here's a piece we cut off a wall right on the back, China, yay. So the label is very, very telling. No one, you know, the Chinese, they get accused very often of making rip-off products. They, they never, nobody in the world falsely puts China on the back of their product or their, that they're manufacturing, except the Chinese. They're the only people that say made in China, right? So something that's made in Des Moines, Iowa, they're not gonna, hey, I got a great idea, let's put made in China. If it says made in China, primo facia evidence, it in fact is made in China. Here's what the challenge is. When you're in a home, it is very difficult to see the labels. Yes, so we've painted over one side, the other side is either inside the wall, it's under the attic, so it, it makes for some special challenges. So one of the things we'll do in a Chinese drywall investigation is move back bits of insulation. Sometimes, uh, and that's the easiest thing to do. It's not destructive and it's a big area, the attic. So it gives us a pretty good way to poke around and see if we can find one or more labels. When uh, we have a happy day, it'll say US gypsum or other US manufacturer. We have a sad day, it says, you know, <coughs> now for other uh, a Chinese indication. Sometimes we'll pull uh, medicine cabinets. It's really challenging though to try to pull the right piece of drywall because you never know where the label is going to be. So that's why the attic is a really great place. Uh, the garages 
are usually the best place because they're seldom insulated, right? So we, we're up in the garage, we're looking around. Sometimes we'll pull uh, medicine cabinets, that's another place, or any other opportunity to get to the backside to search for labels. And so much of the Chinese drywall investigation, it's very difficult to prove a negative. So if it says Chinese drywall, bam, it is. If we don't find any labels for whatever group of reasons, and there are times when that occurs, then it's tougher to prove a negative. So we start looking at other symptoms. There's actually a protocol for this written by the Florida Department of Health. That's what we use uh, in our company. It's very common to be used elsewhere. Uh, that is other companies in other parts of the country. So when you see this black pitting, uh, it's, a, it's very pronounced once you see it one time, especially like in that drain, you can see it very, very well. That black pitting, that is an indicator, that is symptomatic of Chinese drywall. This is an interesting picture because what we're seeing here, you're seeing the blackening on the copper, uh, indicative or symptomatic of Chinese drywall, and that's calcium uh, sulfide. And then you're seeing green, which is a normal uh, or very common corrosive, that's calcium sulfate. So just because something is corroded doesn't mean it's Chinese drywall. It will typically bleed back, which is still not a shortage Chinese drywall. That's why, as they say in the courtroom, a preponderance of the evidence. That's what we're looking for. All right, that's a close up of a shower rod, that deep black pitting inside. So we'll pull the covers. And again, this is in the protocol that the inspector uses. Pull the covers off of the heat pump. These copper coils typically will be copper colored. Uh, there it is again. Copper, copper. Now, that, the red, that's the normal rust or corrosion you see inside an air handler, not indicative of the Chinese drywall. Copper lines turning black, indicative or symptomatic of Chinese drywall. That is a, a, a drain line inside an air handler. That vertical piece is typically copper colored. Uh, this was a fun one. What we did there was we peeled the label back. There was a little sticky label on this. Um, it's a refrigerant line inside an air handler. Pulled the label back, the sticky label. The sticky label had protected that piece of copper from exposure to the gasified uh, Chinese drywall and it didn't um, corrode, just made for an interesting uh, picture. Again, black on the coils. This is inside uh, an electric box. On the left, you'll see that uh, twisted copper wire that would typically be copper colored, but it went to black. This is uh, again, a copper line on the outside, not the foam line, but the line behind it typically would have been copper colored, went all black. This is inside of a thermostat. What you see, let me get the pointer on there for you. This area here, these are contacts inside the thermostat that are typically uh, gold or copper colored that have corroded. Uh, that is a copper penny held up to a, uh, a copper wire. That's a bare copper round wire, so it was very distinctive. One of the things we learned to do, having done hundreds of these investigations, is put things in, in, in the photo, in the documentation, to make it an easy comparison. People go, oh, I see it, I understand it. To, to be candid with you, the majority of investigations we've done over this decade are not Chinese drywall. It's relatively rare. Once a person has that fear, they have that question, rather than come up with goofy answers and say, oh, there's no Chinese drywall here, which I will show you the how and the why we know there is, and even the where in some cases. But we know it's possible. Because we know it's possible, that requires that once that question is asked in a real estate transaction, we take it in a responsible way with an approved protocol to either go, yes, the evidence says yes, or the evidence says no. So it's not to be fearful because it typically will say no in the greater Jacksonville area. Other parts of Florida is a higher probability, but it's about being honest and forthright and retaining the trust of the customer. That's why we do it the way we do. In mirrors, there's metal uh, on the back of mirrors. That's what makes the mirrored surface uh, in areas of high Chinese drywall, in homes with Chinese drywall, very common that the mirror is blackened. So here's a question we get all the time. Uh, and if you're not in Jacksonville, next, pick your town. Is there Chinese drywall in Jacksonville? Now, while all of us have an opinion, I am a, a, a guy, you know, I went to the Naval Academy, I have a degree in physical science, I was a Navy pilot, I'm sort of a uh, show me the facts kind of guy, I, and, and always go to the best source of information, get the facts that are available, and then from those facts, build your opinion. Not on, well, somebody said, and you said, and I think, and I read, 
well, it's good to read, but where you read and what you read matters. All right, so the answer is probably. Uh, it, truthfully, it's assuredly, I know that because we've done investigations where we found it, okay? So this, uh, what you're seeing here, this is called peers data. Peers is a, is a data collection uh, process and peers stands for port, import export reporting service. What does that mean? It means every single container, every single thing, container, bulk shipment that comes into the US or out of the US, what's in that container or what's in that bulk carrier is, is documented and is entered into the peers data. This is the peers data on drywall shipments from China. We know where every single piece of Chinese drywall entered the US. No one was smuggling and stuff. They just put it in the container and sold it. It just got here, you know, honestly and fairly. Turns out, turns out that the majority, 60%, uh, I believe is the actual figure, of all Chinese drywall, yeah, 60%. 60% of all Chinese drywall imported in the United States was imported into Florida. And then you can see the other states trickle on from there. Now, where in Florida? Every single port in Florida that receives international shipments participates in the peers data. So we know exactly how many pounds of Chinese drywall came into exactly what port, all right? And for easy rounding, it's about um, 2,000 pounds of Chinese drywall in a, in a house, okay? So what does that mean? We know it came into Jacksonville. There was 110,000 pounds. We know it came into Miami. We know exactly where it came into. But here's the strange thing. Once it got to the port, we have no earthly idea where it went. Why? We don't know what went up 95, we don't know what down 95, 75, across I-4, down I-10. We don't know what came from New Orleans. Those of you who have watched the video of me in the warehouse with it's full of Chinese drywall, that Chinese drywall came in through New Orleans. How do we know that? Because that the warehouse I was in, was owned by a contractor, local contractor, bought it during the sh shortage and was so pleased to have been able to receive that shipment, paid to have it shipped from New Orleans, put it in the warehouse. How I got involved in that process was with a, the, involved a lawsuit with a lender and a few other folks uh, about is there, is there not Chinese drywall? And it built about 200 uh, apartments and it was throughout the entire 200 apartments. And in my conversation with the maintenance person when we were doing the investigation, I asked, where did all this come from? He said, well, it came from China. I said, well, how do you know it came from China? And, and we got on to the story about New Orleans. I said, man, that's fascinating. You know, that is just fascinating. He goes, yeah, we got a whole warehouse full. You want to see it? And that's how that happened. So I know absolutely positively, precisely where that information comes from. So this is Pierce data. And this is the simple data. It's one of the reasons I'm going to send you all the handouts. When you're in a conversation with another real estate, you're in conversation with a lender, you're in conversation with a customer, when you have the facts on your side, you're trustworthy. You're, you're gaining trust and respect with that individual so that you know you can get them the best information that's available. That's how you manage liability and it's how you grow a strong, strong business. This has worked for us very, very well here at Home Front Inspections. We've been over 40,000 houses in the local Jacksonville area and it comes from a mindset of sharing information as accurately and factually as we know how. All right, this graphic is from the Department of Health. <clears throat> this was, and it's from 2009. This is reported cases. This was reported cases. I gotta, I'm here by myself, I'll be right back. Doorbell. Ah, thanks for your patience. That was my dry cleaning guy. So I'm here in the Home Pro World headquarters by myself. My entire staff has been working remotely for um, what seven weeks now. They've been all we work. So I, I come in every day. I'm here by myself, and 
I've been attempting to continue to support local business, and that's my dry cleaning guy brings the dry clean. It used to be twice a week, now it's once a week. So uh, thanks for that little diversion. Support local business. Anyway, reported cases of health, and this is very interesting. So it makes it look like, oh my gracious, given the data is old and it's imperfect, but it's important to understand where data comes from. The Department of Health accepts a report of a health issue from any individual who says they have one. So you recall, I mentioned to you uh, down in Marion County, we were out doing an investigation and a person said, hey, my husband got lung cancer from this. I've got breast cancer. That's a reported case. It turned out not to be correct. So anytime a person says to the health department, I have this problem, I have this health problem, and it came from this cause, they recorded it as a case. This, these numbers went considerably higher beyond this graphic in terms of reporting, but not of actual substantiated health issues, because there were none. Dangerous discussion. So you're a dutiful and beautiful real estate professional in every likelihood. Here are the kinds of things that I often have heard real estate agents say on the topic of Chinese drywall, and I'm imploring you, don't do these. There's no Chinese drywall in Jacksonville. There is Chinese drywall in Jacksonville. I can tell you exactly how many tons or pounds were shipped into the port of China, how many in every other port, and I can tell you that I personally have been in homes in Jacksonville with Chinese drywall, and we know that because we substantiated it using the protocol from the health department. So yes, is it common? No. Is it a problem? Yes. It's a problem if you represent something other than as it is. I got to tell you this too. The majority of specific Chinese drywall investigations that we've done as a company were in response to another home inspection company indicating it might be Chinese drywall who didn't have the skill set, didn't have the background to do the investigation. They, they, they were acting honorably and honestly and said, this could be Chinese drywall. So we were called in as a second opinion. I will tell you very candidly, every single time we've been hired to do a second opinion on a Chinese drywall case, it has not been Chinese drywall. So we're happy to help you with that. You never know which way it's gonna go, but I'm sharing with you that it is more commonly falsely called Chinese drywall than the protocol would have you say. Okay, other dangerous discussion. XYZ Builder didn't use Chinese drywall. They don't know. So especially during the building boom, it's still the same now for, in one sense. So the contractor subs out to a drywall guy who usually is providing the drywall. They bring the drywall in. They don't know where it came from. You know, they just don't know. What about remodels or storm damage? Very big problem. Very big problem. So there's homes that are 100 years old that end up, they did a remodel or they had some damage after a storm and it ended up Chinese drywall in a place where it shouldn't be. So you cannot look solely at the data of the manufacturer of the house. Multifamily rentals and commercial, yes. Uh, the case I was just sharing with you with multifamily is a couple hundred units, very common. Rental units, hotels, yes, it can happen. Other commercial buildings, yes, it can happen. Stolen Chinese drywall, this is really great. <laughs> So back, especially in the construction boom, it was not uncommon that somebody get delivered some of this skunk board and some other creative subcontractor would go by and steal it. There are cases though we can't point, pinpoint to them. It's just knowing the things that occurred, right? Where it, it, there was Chinese drywall in a builder's home, somebody stole it. And then when they replaced it, it got replaced with uh, a non-problematic drywall and they never even knew they, they, this, the theft saved them a problem. Likewise, some contractor that thought they got a really good deal and a super good price and excellent delivery actually got the stolen Chinese drywall. It goes back to, you cannot know, like Ronald Reagan said, right? Uh, trust and verify, doing the verifications. By the way, our staff, every single one of our staff members is trained to do these investigations. We do this investigation at no cost as a part of every single home inspection that we do. We don't want you to learn to do it. You just go do it. There is only a charge if we're out doing a second opinion or a specific Chinese drywall investigation. So know that your customers are protected when we're out uh, doing any home inspection because we know how to do it. Black market Chinese drywall. Yep, uh, that is, is a, a real and honest problem. What the heck, black market Chinese drywall? So there are people who had larceny in their heart who knowingly 
put one or more pieces of Chinese drywall in a home, when you start looking at what happened after the great building boom was the great crash, there were people who knowingly put Chinese drywall in their home so they can make the claim to the lender uh, as an excuse for abandonment of the home. Sad story. Uh, this is the Consumer Product Safety Commission's Drywall Information Center. You know, you're welcome to go there. I'll send you all these links as a part of the handout, but that's a, a great place for uh, information. They update that pretty regularly. Should you test for Chinese drywall? Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, and the reason is that the tests, uh, any field test, and I actually own a field test kit. Early on in this process, uh, there were companies selling field test kits that later on we discovered that test was did not prove to be valid. Uh, so we stopped doing it. I still have the test kit though. Uh, and the other challenge with testing is the testing is spot testing. So we, if you'd like to do it, we can do it. It's 1200 bucks per sample. What we do, we take a, a, a round, a hole saw cutter, cut out a piece of drywall. We do it right over a stud so that we can take another piece of drywall, stick it back in and screw it in place. It goes off to the lab. The question becomes at $1,200 a sample, where do you sample? Because if you miss, you know, there could be a mixture of drywalls and different things. It's very unreliable. So according to Florida's attorney general, who was, uh, is no longer the attorney general, this is when it was in hot stuff, said it was a scam. There was a document, uh, Bill McCollum, who ran for governor unsuccessfully uh, several years ago. But anyway, when Bill McCollum was attorney general, this was his press release that said it's a scam and talked about how it happens in the bogus test kits. It's very expensive. So this is uh, the document that we use when people uh, call the office and say, hey, I want to get a Chinese drywall test. You say, we can do that. It's $1,200 per sample. Uh, it's thought to be uh, not in your best interest. Here's the how, here's the why, and here's the protocol we use to inspect for symptom of Chinese drywall. And that's worked out very, very well for us. So what is a real estate agent to do? Disclose, discuss, disclaim, and defer. What do we mean by that? If, if it comes to your attention that something had or has Chinese drywall, you absolutely want to disclose, even if it's been remediated, right? So if it had Chinese drywall, they ripped it all out, they fixed everything, they put it all back together, you still want to disclose that. You want to be sure that gets disclosed because you know as soon as the people move in, the neighbors are going to share it. So you want to have these discussions with your customer. If they're fearful, that you can send them to our website. We've got all this information on there. You'll have all the handouts. You can provide it. You can have them in conversation with us. You can hire our staff to do the home inspection. We'll, we'll do that for you. Disclaim. Don't be the source of information. Let our company or some other company or these definitive sources be the source of information by deferring uh, to us. And document, right? Person's got to make sure there's good documentation. That, my dear friends, uh, in its totality, is the uh, everything you ever wanted to know about Chinese drywall, but were afraid to ask. Know that uh, with the COVID-19, we have been doing dozens and dozens and dozens of these programs. We've taken uh, more than 30 programs that we've been teaching in real estate boards, teaching in real estate companies. We've condensed them into these nice short bite-sized pieces. We're doing between four and six of these every week. If you're listening to me live, we'll be doing one tomorrow on strategic philanthropy. If you'd like to have this done exclusively or any of the programs, I'll send them to you. Any of the programs for your company, for your office, for your team, uh, we're happy to do that as an exclusive for you. Um, otherwise, uh, keep an eye out on Facebook, keep an eye out in your email uh, on any of these programs. If I can help you in any way to help your business grow, to help you through a particular real estate challenge or problem you're having with a, with a property, please reach out. I respect you. I, I appreciate you very much. And uh, I wish you a beautiful day.